Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about Azure Firewall which is a managed pass service. So you deploy Azure Firewall in your network and you can filter traffic between different VNets using that. And Azure Firewall being a managed service is highly available and it automatically scales up and down. So if there is too much of a workload on it, it will scale up the resources and if the Azure Firewall is not that busy, it will scale down the resources. Before we go in Azure Firewall, let us talk about network security groups. So network security groups are there and we can use them to filter traffic to our subnets and our virtual machines and we can link them either to network interfaces on our VMs or subnets. But these network security groups work only on network layer. So that means we could only filter traffic based on IP addresses, source destination IP addresses and ports. We cannot uh, do a filtering wherein we are telling NSG to block all the traffic to a particular website and that is called application layer filtering and that is where our Azure Firewall comes in and it can perform those activities. So we see here I have this network security group and it's allowing RDP from any source to any destination. It's allowing communication between virtual networks. It's allowing communication from load balancers inbound and blocking everything else. Similarly, we have outbound rules which allows communication between virtual networks and any outbound communication to internet and denies everything else. This NSG is not linked to subnet. We can link to subnet wherein all the machines in the subnet will honor the rules in this NSG. But in my case, this NSG is linked to my VM111. So if I open the networking properties of my VM111, I could see the network security group name. I've already RDP'd into the VM and using the public IP. So let me go ahead and browse our website. So as internet is allowed, uh, I'm able to browse the website. So we will do a demo where it, we will deploy Azure Firewall now and see how it goes. But before we do that, let us see some basics about uh, Azure Firewall. So this is a hub and spoke topology where we, in, we have VNets and we have our on-prem. So in VNets, you have your resources, but you can do, you can set up a separate VNet with firewall in it, Azure Firewall Pass Service and connect all the VNets to it. So any traffic which goes to from one VNet to other or, or to on-prem will go through Azure Firewall. This is a good configuration if you have VNets in same region, but Microsoft says if you have VNets in different regions and you have global VNet peering, then this is not a good solution and you will experience latency. Either you can do this, you can have your VNets and you can have an individual firewall in those VNets in a subnet. So in this VNet, you can have a dedicated subnet wherein you will define your firewall and you can connect. So any traffic going out of VNet and coming into that VNet will have to respect the firewall rules. So you can do this as well. In our demo, we have this VM, which is in the VNet. Currently, there is no firewall and it's able to access the internet. So we will deploy the firewall and see how it goes. So I will leave the connection open here to my VM and go to my Azure portal and set up the firewall. So in order to do that, first of all, I will have to create a subnet in which my firewall will reside in my VNet. So I have already done that and named it Azure Firewall Subnet. So Microsoft says that you have to name it Azure Firewall Subnet without any spaces. So I have done that. And my other subnet has my virtual machine in it. So I will go to add, click on create, and we will select the same region as our virtual network. So that is Australia East. We will use an existing virtual network and create a public IP. So we can name it firewall dash pip. We will name our firewall as firewall one. So our firewall will get created in our virtual network. And as we have subnet defined already with the name Azure firewall subnet. So in that subnet, it will get 
created automatically and it will create a public IP for that firewall as well. So we can also enable forced uh, tunneling, which means that any traffic going to internet from this firewall, instead of going to internet, will go to a next hop, which we will define. So one of the use case could be that any traffic from your Azure going to internet first should pass through any network compliance in your on-prem. So you can specify that as the next hop. So any internet traffic from this firewall will first go to the next hop where it will be analyzed and filtered based on whatever rules are there and then it will go to internet. But in our case, it's not required. So we'll go next, review and create. And I will wait for it to get created and then start the video. So our firewall has been created now, but our machine, our VM, is not actually directing any traffic to this firewall. So in order to do that, we will have to create a route so that it knows for if that machine has to send anything outbound, it has to go through that firewall. So first of all, we will copy this uh, firewall's private IP address and save it in a notepad and also copy firewall's public IP address. So which would be here. This is our public IP address for the firewall. So this is fine. Now we will go back to our resource group and deploy our route table there. And location would be same as our pnet and we will create it. Our route table has been created. So we will go in the route table. We will create a route here for all the traffic. So it will be 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0. So we will name it all traffic. So this means uh, when we link this uh, route table to our VM, so any traffic going out from that VM will have to go through our firewall which would be our virtual appliance and we have to type in the next hop address which would be the private IP of our firewall. So the route table has been created and we have set the route but still our VM is not sending traffic to that firewall because we have to link our VM to this route table. In order to do that we will go to subnet and link the subnet in which our VM resides which is this one and link to the route table so our subnet uh, has been linked to the route table we have a route also so let us go to our vm and now our vm should be sending all the traffic to our firewall so i open my vm here and uh, it's giving me a black screen so yeah i lost the connectivity to the vm because by default firewall has blocked everything so if we go to firewall we under rules we have three rules so first one is nat1 wherein from outside if we want to go inside to any of the vm we have to create a nat rule so our rdp is blocked so let us enable rdp first so we will create a nat rule here so we will do allow rdp to my vm 111 we will name it this uh, we can define a priority name allow rdp vm111 we want to allow tcp protocol so we will define the ip address so any request coming from anywhere to the public ip address of my firewall on port 3389 or we can do 33891 in that case if we have more than one vms inside so we can use different ports to rdp to them because inside they will be working on port 3389 but here uh, if we rdp to 33891 it will go to my vm triple one and if i have another vm uh, i can define a different destination port i could also use 3389 as well and here i can specify the IP address of my VM, where internal IP address, where it will go on 3389 for RDP. But let us do 3389 one here. Here we will have to specify the internal private IP of my VM, 
which is 10 10 1.4 and port for rdp is 3389 so any request coming on this public ip for firewall on destination on port 33891 will be translated and forwarded to my vm on 3389 so let me add this rule and wait till it gets added so while it is getting added let's look at network rule collection so these are similar to our nsgs these are uh, network layer rules wherein we can allow or block the traffic based on uh, IP addresses and ports so this application rule collection is the new one wherein we can do application layer filtering so we will see that next let us wait for the NAT rule to be created and connect to our VM first the rule has been created so let us RDP so we will RDP to the public IP of our firewall on 33891 and it will be translated to the internal IP address of the VM so the RDP has started to work so let us try to browse any website so our websites are not working because we see that there is no rule which exists let us see whether Microsoft works or not no even Microsoft isn't working so we talked about application rule collection so let us create an application rule here and we will say allow websites priority we will give it 300 so the lower the priority the higher the preference so if we create a deny rule which has a lower priority than this one then the delay will win so we will see that as well so we are creating this uh, allow websites wherein we will define the websites which we want to allow similarly we can create a deny rule also so there could be a situation wherein we can create a blanket allow to everything and deny specific websites or a blanket deny to everything and allow only specific websites here we can select FQD and tags and these are some predefined tags like windows virtual desktop is uh, one of them and windows update so this microsoft automatically puts these uh, URLs for update and Windows virtual desktop and these services which could be allowed but we will say allow Microsoft here So source we will define could be anything protocols we will define HTTP and HTTPS and the target FQDN could be asterisk dot Microsoft dot com so anything to Microsoft would be allowed and we will say allow Google source from anywhere so any VM or any other application can go to google.com so rest of the sites should be blocked so let me add this rule and wait for it to get added and then we will test on our VM while the rule is getting created let's look here at threat intelligence so threat intelligence is a feature wherein microsoft knows about a few ip addresses and domains which are malicious by default it will only alert you that you will receive a high confidential alert for traffic going through your firewall from these malicious ip addresses and domain you could turn this off or you can deny that traffic as well uh, discard let's see whether our rule has been created or not I think it has been created so let us see if we can go to microsoft.com now so yes microsoft.com is working and google.com is working let us try to browse any other website so all other websites are blocked so you could also create a rule here where you can allow all the websites and then create deny rules for denying particular websites so let us allow all websites so for example we have done here allow microsoft so we can say allow all i will remove this google rule and in the target fqdn i will specify asterisk so now from anywhere to anywhere for atn 443 is allowed so let us wait for it to get updated and then see whether it works or not the rule has been created so let us check if we are able to access all the websites and it seems to be working
so all other websites are working now now let us deny a particular website and see whether that works or not so let us create a rule to deny websites so i will deny google source could be anything So let's see whether it works or not. So the rule has been created to deny Google and let's see whether that works or not. So if we go to google.com, it is working. And you know why? Because if we see the priority here, in the allow websites, we have allowed all the websites. In deny, we have denied only Google. So the priority of allow websites is lower than the deny one. So when it starts processing the rules from the lower priority so it checks first this rule and it says that whether google is allowed it sees all the websites that are, are allowed so it allows the google and here uh, it never gets processed because the google is allowed here so in order to for it to work we will have to change the priority of it to 100 i think 100 is the lowest if i do 99 no it won't work so 100 so now our Google should be blocked once this is updated and all other websites should be allowed. The rule has been updated. So let us go to our VM and now this time it should not work. And now we are not able to browse google.com because uh, in priority, the deny rule gets uh, hit first and it denies Google and all other websites are working. So we go to microsoft.com, it works. So this was a small demo on Azure Firewall. So you see that it's different from NSG wherein you can block based only on IP addresses and uh, port numbers. But here you can block based on application layer. But there is a cost to Azure Firewall. NSGs are free. So this is a managed pass service and it has a cost. So the best way of managing this could be that you use uh, NSGs for managing traffic in and out of your subnets and uh, Azure Firewall to manage traffic in and out of your VNets. You can use it in Hub and Spock topology if your VNets are in same region, or you can create an Azure Firewall for each of your VNet and manage traffic in and out. There are third-party appliances and solutions as well, which you can use in place of Azure Firewall, but this video was only about Azure Firewall. So I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.